All right, listen, I know we're all very excited to get into this huge adventure. Bit of advice, though. Turn down the lights, get on the headphones, relax, watch, and listen. Tyria. The dragons have always been here. Sleeping deep beneath the earth. Beneath the sea. Waiting for the time to rise. One hundred years ago, the drowned empire of Or rose from the sea at a dragon's command. His name is written in the legends of the dwarves. A dragon known as Zaitan. His soulless army surged from the waters, hungry for destruction. Our ancestors fought against the tide, but Zaitan's power was too great. We have learned from those defeats. We learn that no single nation can fight alone and succeed. The five races must stand together against their enemies and refuse to surrender. Heroes come together in glory, discovering new magic, new technology that will save our world. Mm -hmm. It is time for legends to become real. Destiny. Forge your legend. Alright, I bet it's been a while since you've seen that trailer. And what a fantastic introduction to the setting, to the game it is. 
Yes, guys, we're going to be going back to the start, and we're going to be playing all of Guild Wars 2 from the beginning in a way that should be understandable to everyone. So if you guys don't know me, I actually cover a lot of Guild Wars 2. It's one of the main things that I do on this channel, and ever since it came out, I've basically dedicated myself to talking about the game, to talking about the story, talking about upcoming updates, and all that good stuff. However, today, I want to start something of a different series that returns us back to basics. I'm going to be doing a playthrough of Guild Wars 2 uh, in kind of a let's play format where we take it upon ourselves to actually go through and demonstrate what it's like to experience this MMO. Now as a big MMO there's a ton of different things you can do in it obviously and play styles. What I want to focus on here though is the campaign, is the story, is the missions, is actually experiencing the world and adventure as you level through it and uh, explore the deeper reaches of where the campaign eventually takes us to. So that's the idea. It's going to be a hell of an adventure. If you just click this video, you're in for a long one here because this is a lot of stuff to get through. But uh, I think I've got some really fun ideas of how to make it as cool as possible. And to demonstrate to those of you who know nothing about this MMO, really what it's all about and introduce you importantly to the story which is so 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 good in the contemporary patches the other thing as well is nobody's really done a good LP of this game for a long time and it's 2018 now the amount of changes updates and improvements are enormous so to have one final big playthrough where we get to see so many of the quality of life improvements, graphical improvements, optimization improvements all at once, I think it's going to be really, really badass. So hopefully this should be pretty fun. We're in for one hell of a ride and our first decision that we get to make, therefore, is what race do we want to play? So there are five that we can choose from. Uh, it's not a big deal in terms of game mechanics, like you're not going to be punished uh, at end game deciding or depending on which one you pick, but this does dramatically change your story and obviously how you look among some other small things. So I'm going to start here with the default on, I guess, I don't know, human. Uh, so humans have lost their homeland in Guild Wars 2, their security and their former glory. Even their gods have withdrawn, and yet the human spirit remains unshaken. These brave defenders of Kryta continue to fight with every ounce of their strength. So it's kind of funny, when the game came out, there was almost, like, in terms of lore and uh, story, the, the humans in this franchise feel a bit more aligned to what you'd expect elves to be in other franchises where we're sort of the fallen race and we uh, we're maybe past our prime or at least those are some of the early ideas that they uh, express. If you guys don't know actually on my channel I did a huge similar playthrough for Guild Wars 1 uh, a similar amount of years after that game released and so to be coming here doing the sequel finally is awesome especially after I tried a project like this once many years ago and ended up not going very far with it. So you can decide if we're male or female I'll go male since I am male. I don't know, maybe we'll play a female character at some point, but uh, we'll go male here. Uh, and then we get to pick our profession. So there are nine professions in this game. You've got three heavy ones up at the top. You've got three medium armor adventuring ones in the middle. And then there are three light armor ones as well. What this screen doesn't teach us is that depending on which of these nine you pick, at end game, you then get to deeper specialize and get like subclasses. So for example, the thief, starts off as a thief, but eventually you can become kind of a marksman oriented character, a dead eye that gets to snipe people with a rifle, or you get to be uh, more of a martial artist, acrobatic style character, the daredevil that does all these crazy flips and uh, dodges and things. Uh, and that's true for all of them, and as more expansions come out, they keep expanding on it. So, like as a warrior, you start as a warrior, but later you can become a spellbreaker, sort of an anti-mage, anti-everything build, or you can become a berserker and just sort of go insane and do crazy damage and condi damage and things. Uh, depending on which class we pick, it unlocks a huge different number of things. I'm going to start pretty simple here. We're going to go light armor, and I'm actually going to pick elementalist. Yes, indeed, elementalist. So this should be pretty fun. Uh, elementalists have harnessed Tyria's natural forces. This is a light armor class. Their powers of destruction are drawn from an affinity with the four elements that make up the world. They conjure air, fire, earth, or water to assault their enemies. And they wear light armor. We'll talk a lot more about elements as we go forwards. And you will see a lot of the different play styles and things as we go through here. So we can determine how we look. We get loads of different options. You get sort of a slider to determine how big or small you are. You get physique options. Uh, I actually have some items unlocked as well. Once I go through regular character creation, where I can unlock a ton of exclusive hairs and eyes and different options as well for customizing. 
Uh, I'm not too big on this kind of stuff, so I'm just going to cut the video here. And I'll make something that looks vaguely cool. And uh, I'll be back in just a moment. I can guarantee you guys probably won't like it, but whatever. It should be fun. Man, I've never properly listened, but during character creation, there's all these kind of weird ringing aura sound effects going on in the background. It's very strange. Uh, they actually changed the background music as of the most recent expansion as well, so you're hearing kind of deserty themes right now. We're not going to get into that stuff for a long time in the series. That's many, many miles and adventures away, but we will get there eventually. So, yeah, I'm making kind of a generic looking guy here. I guess we'll call it here, right? We'll, we'll give him light green eyes, and uh, there we go. So this is going to be our guy. Uh, we won't make him huge. We'll make him sort of a regular size. We'll keep the physique as it is. I don't want him to look like all really big and bulky because we are going to be a caster here. So we'll have that uh, there. There's also a pretty extensive dying system in this game. So for each piece of armor we have equipped, so like upper here, we can actually die multiple different areas. So you can make the primary part of his coat this color, the secondary part this color, and even a tertiary part this color. And then you can do different for the legs, right? You can you can go with another set, and then down here you could go, you know, all one color, for example, on the feet or whatever. And the more gear we unlock, and the different kinds of gear we unlock, later you get shoulders, you get gloves, you get back pieces. A lot of this stuff, like, really opens up the customization options uh, pretty majorly. I will try not to make us look like a carnival by having too many crazy different colours here though. So we'll <laughs> we'll turn those back to there. So, well there we go. The legs don't look like they quite match, but I guess we'll just leave that there. We're going to be moving out of this outfit fairly quickly as well, so don't worry. This is our character, this is what we look like. Uh, one of the coolest things about the core story of uh, Guild Wars 2 is that when you make a character, you get to an uh, answer all these questions about what kind of a person you are, and they can actually manipulate and affect the earliest story you experience. Um, so, we get some cool questions here that a lot of other MMOs won't go to these lengths. So, first of all, we get this, uh, that we study all of the elements, because we're an elementalist. We study all of the elements, but we wear a gem that symbolizes my love of. So, which element do we love the most, guys? Water, fire, earth, or air? And you'll actually notice on our forehead here, we're actually getting another piece of gear now. And it's a gemstone that represents one of these. I actually think the water gemstone probably looks the best. The fire looks pretty cool as well. So let's go fire, actually, because we look vaguely fiery here. And I want to take another fiery option soon. Fire's hunger. It's destructive burn demands respect. It immolates and clears the path for new growth. So we'll do that. Next, we get this option. That trouble may follow me, but I use my what to overcome it. Uh, and so we get to choose between being charming, having dignity, or ferocity. I think I'm going to make my guy charming. We'll make him charming. So I'm charming. No one can resist me when I'm at my best. And I know just what to say to lighten the mood or bolster courage. This actually was kind of a test system that the devs were working on many years ago, like in 2012. Uh, there was going to be an exhaustive like personality system that integrated with the game. These days, it doesn't really mean so much. But it's got some nice little flavor considerations, I guess, if you're something of a role player. Moving on, we've got uh, another choice. So this one's a pretty big one. I was raised where? So we get three options. We can decide to have been raised in the streets. We can decide to have been raised by common folk or among the nobility. And depending on which we pick, a lot of the quests we do, stories, adventures that we go on very early in the game will change based on this. People will treat us differently based on this. And there can even be some minor references to it many, many, many years down the line when we're playing completely different stuff, even like expansion content. Sometimes they will refer back to this stuff. So it's not that some big daunting thing, you can just pick, go with your guts. Um, I happen to sort of know what all of these are, so the one I really want to pick here is Among the Nobility, that I was raised here. I grew up among nobles, including my friend Lord Farron, who can trace their ancestry back to ancient kings. And I received an excellent education, I am well versed in courtly graces, and I understand the responsibility that comes with privilege. So it's not that I necessarily identify with some kind of noble person, but the story and the characters we meet here I think are going to be really, uh, really good. Next we get another question, and it's one of my biggest regrets is what? And by the way, these questions as well, remember we have five races? They change based on if we'd gone with a different race. Uh, so there's like loads of different options very early on. Uh, so one of my biggest regrets, and again this will change the story in the same way, is that I've never searched for my true parents, is that I've never recovered my sister's body, or that I passed up an opportunity to perform in the circus. Uh, so as tempting as this one is here. I actually think uh, these are this is a really difficult decision for me to make here. I'm gonna go with this story I'm gonna show you guys the story where I never recovered my sister's body 
So this sounds pretty compelling, doesn't it? My sister was a seraph. So the seraph are like the law enforcement and the guards and the, the men and women that work as policing and military among the Crichton population. So the human populations of the world here. So uh, our sister was one of these people, the seraph, and centaurs killed her when she was out on patrol. We're going to discover there's some great war between the humans and the centaurs very soon. Uh, but she was killed by centaurs and they never recovered the body. It's always bothered me. So was she really killed? Well, I guess we'll find out eventually. So uh, we, we choose that. And th choosing that won't necessarily immediately change the story. It might only start to feed in a little bit later. Uh, and then here's the last one. Everyone said that I was blessed by blank when I was young. So the humans in this game have a religion where they believe in uh, a, a pantheon of deities. And to what extent these gods still overlook humanity, many are unsure. Many humans are losing their faith, they're losing their way, but we as humans still generally understand that there are these godly creatures that we credit with our arrival on the planet and uh, nurturing us, particularly in years past. Uh, so we can decide which god we care the most about. I won't give you a massive rundown of every single one, but we've got Dwayna, the goddess of healing, air and life. Grenth, the god of darkness, ice, and death. Balthazar, fire, war, challenge. Melandru, the goddess of nature, earth, and growth. Lyssa, who wears many masks and is the jewel-faced goddess of beauty, water, and illusion, who happens to be my favorite goddess, by the way. Or Cormir, a new god that if you played the original game or watched my series on the original game, uh, you would have actually seen the moment that she became a god. Uh, this is the goddess of order, spirit, and truth. What we're going to be going for, I think, that would be most interesting is probably Balthazar. So we're fiery and, you know, we, we already tap into that element to some extent. So let's go with this. We're all about destruction and crazy mage specialization damage. So uh, the god of fire, war, and challenge. This god oversees the battle arena. He gifts those who have a knack for combat strategy and skill with weapons. And I have trained hard to honor Balthazar. So uh, choosing this changes dialogue in stories upcoming. And there we go. That's all of our decisions. That's character creation in Guild Wars 2. Uh, it's pretty extensive, but I think it's pretty fun. So we get a summary of everything we decided here. Balthazar, the god of war, blessed me when I was young. Though trouble may follow me, I overcome it with charm. I grew up among the nobility and I value my honor. I've made something of myself. And the only thing I regret is that I've never recovered my sister's body. I'm an elementalist and I study all the elements. I wear a gem that symbolizes my love of fire. This is my story signed and we get to create a character name i always love these moments uh so i'm actually gonna go with an old name that in my previous attempt to an, uh, do an lp of this game i uh once upon a time tried and then abandoned we're gonna go with the name casey whitedale and there we go let's enter Tyria. the human race once ruled Tyria. Now, we struggle to hold our ground. We've been defeated, driven back, broken. But we will not surrender. So many nations have fallen. Only Krita still stands. Our faith is strong despite the silence of the six gods. With courage, We'll make our stand in divinity's reach. The city is my home. I was born into luxury, a noble of divinity's reach, and privilege comes with responsibility. I protect the commoners under my care. They believe in me. I'm grateful for their trust, and I will not let them down. Today, I plan to venture beyond the gates of the city and see the world for myself. But when I arrived in Shamor, I found the town under siege by centaurs. Innocent villagers are in danger. Someone has to help. I will show the people that we can triumph, that there is still hope. This is my story.
And there we have it. So a little bit of background on the world. We're going to get thrust into a conflict here between centaurs and humans in a great storm that is raging just outside the city walls. So uh, here we are. Uh, there, welcome to the game. I guess I'll close the chat box down here. Uh, so yeah, getting around WSD helps us to move. Uh, we are actually in an MMO, obviously. So these are other players. There's going to be lots of people running around making new characters. This person here just happens to be a new thief that uh, has started playing the game. Uh, we're standing here. Um, just to give you a sense of the UI for a second, this is our mini-map on the bottom right. We get a chat box to communicate with people on the bottom left. Uh, at the very bottom, we get an experience bar. So as we kill things, we level up, we get stronger. On the top left, there's a couple of other buttons. You get like a game menu where you can go to options and support for your account and stuff. You get a contacts list. You get a heroes panel uh, where you can equip gear and stuff, but we'll deal with all of that later, I suppose. On the top right, though, as you watch this series, okay, always on the top right, the game is telling you what to do next and where to go and what to do. So here you can see we're on the quest Defending Shamor, and it says Protect the People of Shamor. So Shamor is a little village just outside of the city. These are the village buildings here, and it says we should speak to Corporal Burn. If we click this, it will show us uh, our story. So you can see this here. This is the summary we read on character creation. These are all the decisions we made on character creation. This is like a representation of us. And as we play further along the game, this will expand. So can you see this here? It says Crichton Politics, right? This is like the start of the game, all right? The year is currently 1325 AE, which means after the Exodus. 1325 years after the gods left. This is when the story begins. And uh, so, yeah, we'll speak to the corporal and we'll help these people against these centaurs that have attacked the city. So what do you have to say, Corporal? Everybody get to the inn. We can protect you at the inn. We need to go to the inn, um, and we're going to run through. The game has given us tips on how to move. So yeah, as I hold my uh, mouse down, I get to move the camera. And here's some centaurs themselves uh, that we can attack. We can try to kill to protect these uh, cowering villagers. Here are the uh, Seraph, just like we said before. Our sister was one of these, and they died. Um, so instead of running through there, I'll let them deal with that. And I'm going to try and get to the inn where apparently we can be protected. Uh, fun fact, well, a long time ago when the game first came out, there were like different things to do at this stage of the game. You could run around collecting resources and things and helping people in more ways. But they sort of refined things. There's kind of a notorious update in about 2014, I think, where what the developers did was they changed a lot of early game stuff. Not necessarily always for the better either. Um, and it simplified this mission quite a lot. I think that's to help new people understand where to go very quickly and streamline things. But so here we go. This is the inn here. And we see that they're being attacked by some more centaurs. So we'll deal with them. Uh, and here we got a woman called Sergeant Walters. Who when we press F on, we can sort of progress our quest. Stay calm. Stay Sergeant, there are more centaurs on the other side of town. Captain Thackeray's calling for reinforcements at the garrison. If he's calling for help, it must be serious. But I can't spare anyone. I'll go. Captain Thackeray's never failed Divinity's reach. If I can help him, I will. Balthazar, bless you. That's the spirit that'll win this war. Good luck. So, we hear about a guy called C Captain Thackeray. Um, and so, yeah, that conversation actually used to take place in here, but they moved the woman to the front of the, the inn. I don't know why. But it's pretty cool. You can come in here. You can explore. You'll notice that on the walls, you can actually see, like, there's a language written, like the signs that are written around. There'll be recipes and things on the menu. The devs have actually got a language in the game called New Crichton. It's basically a cipher for the English alphabet, but this is actually translatable. Once upon a time, I could actually do that quite easily and comfortably. Right now, I can't, though. These things, I've been forgetting them. Um, but, yeah, so you find that constantly in the world. So it really feels like a real sort of living realistic environment where these people actually uh, live and do things so anyway, we've got lots of rescued villagers here it used to be that you could press F and interact with the villagers in the town father's body in the street keep your voice down he's scared enough already you could help the NPCs come here I'm sure he's all right and uh, so, yeah, that's why they're all sort of hiding around. There'll be lots of dialogue constantly triggering. If you stand around, most people in this game talk. Uh, it's just a matter of being there at the right place to hear what they say. On this series, I'll try to let us hear as much of what the NPCs say and as much of the ambient dialogue. But it's sort of an insane job to try and do it all. So we'll see. Anyway, so we'll kill this guy. And uh, we'll progress on. So we're going to go to the garrison to find this captain. This captain of the Seraph. Um, and uh, we're going to walk along here. So yeah, importantly as well on the UI, if you look at the bottom, this sort of mess down here, this is my skill bar. Um, so Guild Wars has a very specific way of doing skills in that the weapon that I'm wielding changes the skills I use. Right now at the start of the game though, I only really have two abilities. I've got this one here, 
which is a heal skill. So if I activate this when I'm low on health, we'll glow blue and we can get our health back. Right now we're at 100% though. We have 395 health. And as we get attacked, that will go lower. And we have one attack so far. This is called Dragon's Claw. Fling fire in a claw-shaped spread at your foe. And so it's actually like three strikes all at once. If we were playing like a warrior right now, if we were playing a guardian, if we were playing any of the other classes, we'd have different abilities. This is only because we're a mage, right? I'm an elementalist. So, uh, yeah, and it's because our, the game has started me off with a dagger, which you can see in one of my hands there. So uh, we'll progress along. I'm also going to be using, a lot of the time in the series, uh, a control setup that makes it kind of play like an action uh, RPG rather than a tab ta uh, targeting based RPG. So you can see I've actually got a crosshair in the middle of the screen. This is called Action Combat. This was a sort of a newer feature that was released with one of the expansions. A lot of people still don't know about for Guild Wars, but uh, it makes things very, very smooth. Um, and I would really recommend it to most people who start playing the game. You should bind this in your options and use this because it really is a dream to play the game like this. Easily you can play on a controller or whatever. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're at the entrance of the garrison. Uh, the gates are closed and we've got to defend it. You can see again on the top right, it says that we need to help defend the garrison from the Tamini attackers. So Tamini is the name of this particular tribe of centaurs that are attacking us. And they're going to keep attacking us. We actually have to defend this place. You'll find when you get out of the tutorial instance in the real world, stuff like this happens all the time. And if you actually fail to do the defense, locations like this garrison will fall to the enemies. They will be destroyed and you have to try and recapture them and so forth. But so there we go. Uh, we've defended for long enough. Uh, me and this guy here, Zado time. And uh, we're going to run in now. So um, we progress to the next stage. Uh, and Thackeray himself is here. So this is the man. He's looking pretty cool. He's one of the most important characters. If you've read some of the books at this point, you'd already know a little bit about him. We'll learn much as we go forward. And we can speak to him. He says, there's no time to waste. Focus on the centaurs. And we say, I won't let you down. Uh, and so, yeah, the centaurs are now actually attacking from the other side, too. Maintain the pressure. We've got them off balance. Uh, and we're just going to try and fight uh, to s survive here. Uh, if we can defend the garrison, then we can defend the village back up the hill. And uh, the tutorial is done. We do have a lot more options, by the way. This is deliberately tuned to be really easy these days. So we don't have to worry too much. We can actually come up these ramps, though. And you can watch the battle from above, uh, which is always quite fun. I always like doing this here. So uh, if you see on the top right, it says defeat the centaurs and there's a bar. That's going down. I'm actually, this is not solo right now. Any other players that you can actually see down there, regular real human beings are down there fighting uh, and defending this place. So more centaurs are running in from that field back there with this horrible violent storm. And if we watch when my allies down below, as they continue to progress here, you'll notice now there's a big dangerous boss here. Uh, and he's actually determined to survive right now. He's immune to damage. And he will be until he gets into the thick of the place and starts trying to kill the captain. Take down their leader. So there he is, and we got to blow him up. Looks like my uh, allies are doing tons of damage. You think you can defeat me? <laughs> and he runs off immediately. <laughs> All right, so uh, he charges away. We are going to chase him out. We're on the offensive now. This is so cool seeing everyone run through. Uh oh, and the Seraph is scared. Why? get a big boss fight. So this is pretty cool. Destroy the greater earth elemental that the Tamini have summoned. So there's lots of stuff that goes on here. First of all, we can zoom our camera out a lot further. We get two targets, the right hand and the left hand. Um, and so he's going to be like destroying this tree that's getting blown around here. Our allies start dying who we can start trying to revive. There are extra enemies to kill during the fight. And uh, this t the hands as well do a big knockback. If we try and attack them, they might knock us away. If you want, if you need to recover. we can actually stand next to Logan, who's got this bubble. And what he does, uh, if you stand with him in the bubble, uh, he actually gives you these things here, these boons you can see on my user interface. Boons are like enchantments in this game. They're buffs that strengthen you. So by standing with Logan, he's pulsing us in this bubble. Defenses for us. He's given us protection, which reduces our damage. Regeneration, which means we always get our health back uh, consistently over time. And he gives us another boon called stability. Which means the next time this guy tries to knock us back, he won't be able to, which is great. Fight. Fight for everything you hold dear. So there you go, we destroy one of the hands. My other guys have been doing some good work here. 
And now we've got to do is break this other one. Which hopefully we can get through in time. We're getting attacked by the other guy nearby. Not too difficult of a fight. It's more of a spectacle than anything else. But it does look pretty badass. There'll be other versions of this we do later that are actually more of a real boss. It's not dead yet. Brace yourselves. Think it's going to explode. And uh-oh. It gets destroyed and knocks us out. So there you go. That's the tutorial. Where am I? What happened? You were injured when the elemental exploded. Captain Thackeray brought you here personally. You've been unconscious for three days. You had lots of visitors. Villagers you rescued, some Seraph, even a noble from the city. He came by several times. That'd be Lord Farron. He's a good friend. I'll check in with him once I'm fully recovered. What should I do now? Fresh air and exercise are the best medicine. The goddess Duena helped you. Perhaps you could help others? Thanks, I will. And thanks for taking such good care of me. Bless you. You'll find plenty to do out in the valley. May Duena protect you. And so the adventure begins, really. We get the quest reward here. Defending Shamor complete. The game gives us a new dagger. Uh, which is um, uh, a little bit stronger than our old one. No. Uh, you'll notice on the flavor text area as well, it says that we can actually equip this in our offhand. You can dual okay. wield daggers if you want, even as an elementalist, uh, which is pretty cool, but we only unlock the capability to do that at level six. But you'll notice when we accept this, we get a few coins. So we're going to get a first little bit of gold here, but you get these experience points too. This is actually so many experience points that if you watch the bottom of my screen here, this yellow bar, it fills all the way up instantly. And we gain a level straight away. Uh, so you basically in this game actually start level 2 instead of level 1 really. Um, and this unlocks a lot of new stuff for us. So we get this diamond over our minimap. If we click this, it says here you go. Here's your level 2 rewards. So what do we get from this? Okay. First of all, um, we unlock the hero panel. So it says you've just received a weapon. Your hero panel displays items from your inventory that you can equip as well as your character's stats. Open it by clicking the icon in the top left or just by pressing the H key. So I'll click this hero. And this is us. So this is the stuff we've got equipped. The flame eye, the gem on our forehead from character creation, these horrendously dyed pieces of gear from earlier, and the original dagger we had. Well, now I've got a new dagger, so I can equip that, and we'll just keep the old one in our inventory. And then also this ring here, this is kind of a special item that you get for free if you have a certain type of account. It really doesn't mean anything. It's like tiny little bits of stats. Uh, so yeah, that's the hero panel. And then all of our like numbers are here. We don't have to dig into these for a long time, so don't worry too much. But uh, we'll give a brief overview. So by leveling up, we get stat increases, right? So our stats have improved. Power increases damage. Precision increases critical hit chance. Toughness decreases incoming damage. And vitality increases health. And so that's what we got. We got extra power, precision, toughness, and vitality. Basically, we're stronger. You'll notice we now have 470 health. Okay, so uh, yeah, and then finally, this bit's uh, pretty cool. By leveling as well, we unlocked a totally new skill. We've unlocked our second weapon skill. So before, all we could do was Dragon's Claw, the three strikes. But now we can unleash our new attack too by uh, pressing skill two. And we can breathe fire here in, in the house and we can burn the house down. Uh, so this is actually a really strong ability for early in the game because it does a different kind of damage. Condition damage, so like damage over time. And uh, that's just really strong early in the game. So very cool stuff. Um, and yeah, we're out in the real world here. Here's someone else who's just finished the tutorial. And here's all the wounded people in the aftermath of the battle. Uh, so we can have a bit of a wander around here. Um... Uh, here's uh, the priestess that was speaking to us in that cutscene a second ago. She says, forgive me, I must attend to the wounded. May Duena hasten your co uh, convalescence. May Duena bless you. Uh, there's a soldier who's wounded down here. And they say, that elemental nearly took my head off when it exploded. I had no idea centaurs had that kind of magic. And we say, they've got parlor tricks compared to us. Good point, centaurs can't hold a candle to our magic. I once saw a guy turn into a tornado. Let's see if a centaur can do that. And we say that's the spirit. That's funny because the final skill we will unlock is called the Elite Skill. And they're very special, powerful abilities that you guys will get to see later in the series. And as an Elementalist, we get to do that. We get to turn into a tornado. So it's kind of cool to have an NPC stay there. We also say, don't give up hope, soldier. Our magic is great and we won't lose. And they say, uh, thanks for your encouragement. I'm proud to have fought by your side. And we can say, we blew it up, didn't we? Uh, we can counter anything that they throw at us. He says, yeah, when I get out of here, I'm signing up for garrison duty. If those flea bags attack again, I'll kick them. 
their tails. So everyone's just a bit wounded. There are tons of characters I could speak to in this world. Uh, in the original game, I made it my mission to speak to absolutely everyone and do every little thing. But we are talking thousands and thousands of videos for Guild Wars 2. The this game is that much bigger. So I will just try to speak to people who are relevant without boring you all to tears. Okay? How can I aid you? So here's a, a, a sort of a more important priest, I guess. He says, Duena, bless you, kind soul. What may I do for you today? And we say, well, what is this place? He says, well, this was Miller Scott's house, but he was lost in the attack and willed his dwellings to the followers of Duena. We've set it up as an infirmary for now and hope to make it a permanent hospital. Do all clergy of Duena practice medicine, we ask? He says, yes, medical training is a part of our calling as Duena is the goddess of healing. Uh, so does she call on us to cure. I thank the goddess every day for allowing me to help the poor people of Shamor. Or just the people, sorry, not poor people. <laughs> um, what made you decide to join the priesthood? Well, when I was young, I saw Duena's blessings help my sister to overcome a grave illness. I wish to do my part to save lives and heal what has been injured. I felt this was the best way. And we can say, well, are there any other priests and priestesses of the other gods around? Uh, and he says, well, the Elvin Monastery is home to followers of Cormir. That's kind of a, a location pretty far away from here right now. While I believe a priestess of Balthazar is in the Lost Haven, devotees of Melandru and Lissa are likely somewhere out in the wilderness. And lastly, we can say, well, what about Grenth, this god of death? Ah, of course, he says. I believe there is a priest near the graveyard in Shamor. I have seen him depart towards Divinity's Reach come nightfall, so it's likely he can only be found thereabouts during the day. So what's kind of interesting as well, there is a day-night cycle in this game. Um, so right now, I've actually made sure to time this first episode so that it's day for us. But when night falls, different events and things can happen in the world based purely just on what time of day it is. So if you go to the graveyard at night, you can get some special events and things. But yeah, so this is the world. Uh, we can speak to this scout. The fields beyond Shamor are Krita's breadbasket. Since the centaur attack, citizens are trying to rebuild their lives. But it's tough with bandits and dangerous wildlife roaming the area. Don't wait for an invitation. Jump in and help them. This is a waypoint. Waypoints appear on your compass, which is in the lower right corner of your screen. You can also see them on the world map, which you can access by pressing M. Press M again to close the world map. To teleport to a waypoint, open your world map and click on the waypoint to which you want to travel. Okay, so yeah, he gives us a little bit of a guide there of uh, some of the upcoming story and places that we can go to, things we can do in the world. And he teaches us, yes, about this device just down here. So this is the waypoint. This is like the primary travel mechanism for the game. As you explore, you find new ones of these. They unlock for you, and then you can instantly teleport between them for a small fee. Now, we only have 72 gold right now. Uh, copper, sorry. Uh, which means we have to be careful about how many of these use we use how quickly. But very soon we'll have tons of money and we don't have to worry about that anymore. So that's perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, the scout generally just tells us what we can do next. I think I will do that next episode though. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this little introduction to Tyria, to Guild Wars. Um, we're not going to be showing off too much open world stuff in all of the videos. Uh, but I do want to show you what it's like to level and go out and explore the world before we get back to the story. This is a story about fighting titanic massive elder dragons great beast elemental forces in the world that are hugely destructive and it all starts with a fight and a battle against the first elder dragon of death Zaitan. Uh, it's a really epic story, but we're in the earliest little moments right now, and uh, it will be a while before we get to some of that juicy stuff and uh, into the expansions and the 2018 stories and beyond, which I all intend to do. So, uh, yeah, we'll get there slowly but surely. Hopefully you guys enjoyed episode one. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll be back super shortly next time.